Hey guys, today we're going to talk about drafting on the bike and it's a topic that everyone seems to think they know something about. That's probably because every cyclist that's been riding more than a few months on the bike has had a sense of how important drafting is. You know, by drafting, we simply mean riding in a position where you're sheltering from the wind. You know, we've known for basically a generation that if you're riding close to a rider in front, even if there's only one of you and you're close to your cycling friend, then you'll get a significant reduction in the amount of effort. The amount of VO2 max has been studied in scientific papers. The amount of power that you've got to put out in watts. Basically, how difficult it is to ride is greatly reduced when you're in the draft of another rider. Now, it also helps if that rider is larger than you, if they're sitting upright, for example, and you're sheltering. So for sure, there are a lot of variables that go into that particular equation. In fact, that is the question for today that I want to ask you guys. Do you know, do you have a sense of the amount of savings that you get from riding in that draft position? Now, I'm sure many of you will say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's like 30 percent, it's 40 percent, it's 50 percent. But can we can we hone that down mathematically? Can we build a model that actually helps us say, yeah, if you're riding position two or position three or position four in that draft line, then this is exactly what I'm going to save or put it another way. These are the amount of watts that I'm going to have to use to stay in that draft line compared to if I was swapped out by position one or even more, if I was just riding on my own, what would the equivalent watts be? Well, actually, guys, I can save you the trouble of watching all this video and the how to's. And I can tell you right now that we've done all the work behind the scenes. And I can tell you that the savings depend on a lot of variables. I cannot just say the savings are 50 watts because it depends on, let's say, the watts you're putting out because that determines to quite a large extent your speed, right? It's also affected by what position you're in. So are you in position two, position three, position four? Believe it or not, it's even affected by how many riders are following you. That to me has been a big heads up of the last 10 years to realize that drafting is actually affected not just by the big variable of you following behind another rider on the road, but actually you being followed by other riders. That's been studied now in the wind tunnel, on the road and in the lab. And we can definitively say there is a definite effect of being followed by other riders. It's not a huge effect. And sure, the distance that they follow you is important even then. So given all these complicated uh, you know, variables, how are we going to model this? Well, it's kind of been done for us a little bit. If you start to look online, you can find you know, a fair number of academic papers going back 10, 15 years on modeling the amount of draft savings either in the road position or in a TT position or in a cycling track team pursuit, i.e. up to four riders on the track. And the difficult thing about this is that all these papers don't show exactly the same thing. And the reason for that is that in each study, certain variables have not been controlled for. For example, the distance between the riders, or for example, the number of riders in the pace line, or for example, the speed of the riders, or for example, the size of the riders. You know, in an ideal study, we should have probably equally match riders, approximately equal size to really start to say with some confidence, this is the saving. Now, fortunately, several recent papers, and I'm talking about 2015, 16, 17, have taken you know, five or 10 studies from the last 10, 20 years and modeled them in a way that's actually quite useful. I graphed out what are the benefits. So they've taken a graph, for example, this one on 53 by 12 cycling, which tells you the draft advantage of one cyclist following another in an upright position with a gap of one meter with different speeds. They've taken that and added it to other studies that have done similar things. And you gradually build up a more complicated model, which allows you to say with some confidence what the effect is of number of riders and what is the effect of riding distance, the distance between them, because that's a big second variable in there. So here's an example for you from Swiss side. They went into the wind tunnel and they looked at the drag saving for the rider on the rear, the trailing cyclist. They also looked at the effect of the saving for the rider on the front. So that's an example of a useful study. 
And we've taken all of this data and we've crunched this data, you know, like we have the habit of doing of fast fitness tips. And we've come up with what I think is a fairly good model. I'm not saying it's perfect, but riding on the flat, solo, or for n number, any number of riders with any distance between them, I can now give you a pretty good model that you can download either as a draft or as a sample below. So let's have a little look at this model. Let's say you're riding on your own and you're riding around, let's say 250 watts. You know, what? Um, we've got no adjustment there. Let's say a cyclist comes up behind you. Now we can say one rider is following you. The distance between them is, let's say, two meters. You know, is there any saving from a friend coming up behind you with a two meter gap, you know, and you carrying on compared to when you were riding solo? How often have we had this on the road where you're being slipstreamed by another rider and you're getting pretty annoyed? But let's say they did have a two meter gap. What is the saving? Well, typically I work out that with a 250 watt rider, the saving that you'd have is around about three to four watts. In other words, the effect of them easing that low pressure vortex, which you're creating, you know, if you weren't there, they're effectively easing it by being in that, being in your wake at the same speed, of course. The effect is for you to have about a three to four watt saving. Okay, let's look at a different situation. Let's say your riding friend then decided to overtake and pace you. Now, if you were carrying on at 250 watts, that 250 watts that were requiring you to go along solo, and your friend wanted to pace you at two meters, then in order to pace you at the same speed, because now you'd be in his draft, so he would have to significantly increase his watts, because although you'd be going at a certain kilometers an hour, let's say 40 kilometers an hour solo, once he drafted you at 250, you'd be pushing onto him unless he significantly increased his watts, assuming his cycling physiology and size, CDA, etc., was similar to yours. So for you to be carrying on at 250, we can see from the calculator that he'd have to increase his watts to 317, or alternatively, you'd have to drop your watts down to around about 200 in order for him to keep the same power, i.e. 250, because the amount of savings that you would get from pacing out two meters would give that calculation. Now, clearly, if the gap between the riders was changed, for example, one meter, the calculation would change. But let's say another rider comes up then from your chain gang and wants to ride with you with the same gap, roughly two meters, then would there be any additional saving on you given that you were riding along um, around 250? Well, yes, the, <laughs> the additional benefit from a trailing cyclist, even three in line, would be around about two watts. So an additional two watts benefit on you and a very slight benefit for, on him. In fact, we can calculate the benefit on him because he is position one and he's followed by two riders, right? With a two meter gap, with zero riders in front and two riders behind, both pacing you with a two meter gap, then you actually get 2.31 watt saving approximately. Why is it higher than having one trailing? because the effect of smoothing out your wake is higher if you've got two riders pushing that wake. You know, that rider is getting the benefit from effectively a bigger mass, a bigger mass following him. So it turns out that the equations don't stop there. You can calculate, you know, any combination. So you could say, okay, well, I want to be number three in the line of four. Well, you know, this is actually a typical track situation, isn't it? Team pursue, four riders, you know, what's, what's the power of rider one, what's the power of rider two, what's the power of rider three, and what's the power of rider four to go at approximately the same speed. The calculator will allow you to do that. In fact, just change the parameter to track. I recommend you change the gap. You can change the gap down to, let's say, 0.5 of a meter. You know, on the road, I would say you wouldn't really want to go within one meter, but out on the track, you could, due to, you know, control conditions and skill, of the riders involved, maybe take that down to 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 of a meter. So 0 0.5 of a meter, let's say your position two, so one rider in front, two riders behind, let's say you're riding at 333 three, three, three watts, then in position two, you're under 333. 
if you were solo on the track going at that same speed, I calculate that the amount of power you'd need would be around about 560. So also on the spreadsheet, I've modeled triathlon and time trial position. That is studies that have specifically studied riders that are in the TT or triathlon position. And part of the reason for this, I wanted to find out whether some of these regulations, such as the WTC regulation on drafting or the Ironman regulation on drafting, which, you know, these are very confusing regulations. Sometimes they say seven meters, sometimes 10, sometimes 12, you know, <laughs> depending on where you look. Even in draft illegal try events, the regulations on drafting are confusing. In my opinion, these all need to be unified. But the model actually predicts that their cutoff of, let's say, let's take 12 meters is insufficient. And there is a significant draft gain. You can play around with the model yourself. Okay, guys, that's the Fast Fitness Tips drafting calculator. It takes into account all the variables that we could easily model, you know, based on the studies that are in the public domain. No doubt you've got some comments that, you know, there's certain things we haven't considered. For sure, post them in the comments below. If you think you can do a better job with a drafting calculator or similar, or if you think it's been done before, I'm sure you'll send me a link in due course. But for now, tell me what you think of the calculator. You can download it in the link below. And if you can support us on Patreon or give us a like or give us a share, guys, it's much appreciated. That's what helps produce these kind of videos. All right, guys, have a great ride. Until next time, take care.